Hello friends, I'm Dr. H. V. Chandalia from Mumbai. In this RSSDI meeting, today I'm going to speak on metformin revisited, an old molecule with new insights. Metformin is the most commonly used molecule in type 2 diabetes. And it has been used for more than four decades or even five decades in our country. In spite of that, there are very, very interesting new insights I wish to share with you in my talk. Most importantly, metformin and cardiovascular disease, we are going to look at that because as you know, there were some favorable outcomes in UK PDS as far as metformin is concerned. Then we are going to look at the side effects of metformin use. For example, gastric intolerance is very common. And now we know that the genesis of this could be genetic. That means there are some transporters like organic cation transporter one, two, and there are other transporters called MATE mates one and two which are involved in the absorption of this compound from the gut and is transport along the liver and kidney excretion. So depending upon some of the genetic uh, polymorphism, you can have a situation where the absorption is delayed or, or poor and then a large amount of it collects in the bowel and will produce the gastrointestinal symptoms. This is something very new for us to understand. Another very important area, of course, is the clinical situation where we use this molecule besides type 2 diabetes in polycystic ovarian disease, where it will improve the ovulation and menstrual cyclicity in women with polycystic ovarian disease. So this is one very wide clinical use being done, knowing that about 3 to 5 percent of young women suffer from polycystic ovarian syndrome it becomes a very frequent use of this compound. Then of course you know that this compound has now been studied with the landmark studies by Janet Rowan and others that it can be used in pregnancy with diabetes, gestational diabetes, and it was used without showing any side effects as compared to the insulin therapy group in pregnancy. So it is considered now a safe molecule in pregnancy. As a matter of fact, the first trimester of pregnancy it may be able to even, even reduce the fetal loss or the mishaps occurring there. Then, of course, you should know very interestingly that the compound is now being considered as having some anti-cancer properties and metformin users have a lower incidence of colonic cancer and therefore it is being seriously considered as an adjunct therapy uh, in, in the treatment of cancer. So these are some very interesting new uses of this compound. Also remember that gut microbiota is a very, very interesting subject in type 2 diabetes at present. And metformin alters partly its mechanism of action is by altering the gut flora favorably. And that is how it probably at least part of the action is, is, is attributed to change in gut flora. So, I think these are some of the very interesting newer aspects of this compound and we look forward to some more data in some of these areas and it's going to get you know far more interesting than what we thought this old molecule deserves. I wish to give you a few important messages attending this RSSDI. I was involved with this organization about 35-40 years ago. Now I continue to be a patron, so you see my name there. And of course, I established the journal of RSSDI. In you know, 20 years, I edited it. Now it's considered a good journal. It is, we have elevated it to an international level. And I'm sure the present editors are doing a great job. I did the third edition of the textbook of RSSDI. And we hope the next edition will be even better. But you can see that the books have done very well. And these books are now being read in about 20 countries by students who want to do, who want to 
specialized in diabetology. So this is a great organization. Presently, of course, I come here just to deliver a few lectures and interact with you. And we have some very great, able young people who have taken over the reins and I hope they take it to the greater height. So it's a, it's a very important organization in our country and I wish all of you will participate actively and, and make it a more of a research organ, research and academic organization. Message I would like to give to my colleagues, medical community in general, as far as this diabetes is concerned is that although we all come here to really learn about how to control diabetes, how to detect and control diabetes, the variety of very important drugs and injections. But let me tell you what really our country needs is prevention. And I would still urge you to practice prevention at whatever level you are practicing. You, when you see your patient, do think of the family members who are very likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Detect the disease early, treat it early and very, very efficiently. Try to prevent complications in people who already have diabetes. That is the most fruitful and rewarding area in the practice of diabetology. And do establish in your practice what I find most efficient in our country is continuity of care. We do not have a mechanism to continue seeing a few thousand patients for 20, 30, 40 years. This is what we need to develop so that we can see these people very closely and help them and their family day in and day out. I think that is the direction to take if I can if I can exhort you to go into that direction.